Okay, welcome back. What we'll do now is to remind ourselves of the huge tour we did earlier on. Uh, what we did for the first 90 minutes was to introduce ourselves, introduce our ideas, and um, lay what we thought were our emerging issues. So I'm going to hand over to our very beautiful rapporteur, very efficient, mm -hmm. and she's going to remind us of all of that flow of information we had for the first round. And from there, we are going to move forward. Thank you, Nena. My name is Sorina Telanu. I will just go to my list and read all the emerging issues that have been identified during the previous session. So we have risk and threats to the multi-stakeholder model, lack of support and interest in internet governance issues from the local business and academia, oppressive trends in legislation, especially with relation to blocking and filtering content, how to engage in discussions with the government, then we move to child protection and cybercrime, content and the need to develop more local content, changing markets for content, then identity management, acceptable behavior on the internet, how to better protect consumers in the information society and how to make the government more responsible in the information society, the need for safe and responsible use of the internet and the better inclusion of youth, creative content, then we had a new concept, internet governance for peace, broadband connectivity and development of broadband networks, data centers and data security, cloud computing, identity in the network, digital divide and infrastructure for the internet of the future, government to citizens interaction, e-government, e-democracy, open government data, vulnerability and profiling of IP transactions, sustainability of the multi-stakeholder model and of, of the IGF, digital literacy and how to behave online, online sovereignty and jurisdictional issues, principles of internet governance, network neutrality, internet as a public good, capacity building in internet governance, intellectual property rights, internet exchange points and the need to develop local content again, IPv6 and the transition from IPv4 to IPv6, privacy and data protection, and here there was it was mentioned that there is a need for international privacy protection treaty at the international level in order for cloud computing to be promoted, ICT for disaster relief, openness, universality and neutrality of the internet, social media, CCTLD services, and last things, self-regulation and soft regulation in internet governance, and again, e-governance and e-government. Thank you. Thanks, Amelian. Quick question. I'm not going to ask if you endorse that because I was here when you said all of that. Uh, the question rather is, are there emerging issues that have not been captured? Because this is very important for us going forward. Are there issues you think have emerged that were not captured? Thank you. I mean, w one thing that I am kind of thinking about is, as a tool, if we could take those issues and put them into an Excel spreadsheet, right, as a follow-up, as a follow-up, and then we begin, because some of them, to me, I could begin to merge some of them, right, into uh, sort of they're similar enough and we could figure out, so instead of having 37, or I may have the number wrong, <laughs> or 22, we would have 12 or 15, and then we could, because the commonality will help us. Uh, and, and then we could leave on our Excel spreadsheet um, uh, some blanks uh, for capturing um, emerging issues that we didn't speak about already or that someone who wasn't here didn't uh, write. And then we would have this great compilation uh, for our report, anyway, from our workshop. But that would also help us, I think, for me, um, I'm just looking. Um, yesterday in the Arab um, IGF workshop, there you are, uh, I proposed a sister-to-sister -sister interaction between the IGF USA 
with the Arab I Internet um, group on picking a couple of subjects and s being involved with them when they address the subject and having them come and be involved with us. So this list, to me, might begin to show where those sister-to-sister -sister interactions would begin to be natural. I think it's a great idea, Marlene, and, and maybe we should have a call, and I don't know if it makes sense, where it's uh, where the different regional I initiatives, um, you know, tick that they are involved. So then I could, as Arab IGF, see, well, yes, the U.S. IGF and maybe uh, uh, the East African are interested in that specific topic, and then we can come together and talk about that a bit more. You never cease to amaze me. <laughs> you never cease to amaze me because she, she can bring out innovative ideas on the spot. So um, we still have some time to do the the emerging issues. So um, do you want us to go back to the emerging issues and like cluster them? Or would you want us to do that in the debriefing tomorrow? If we could send the emerging list blah, 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 emerging issues <laughs> summary <laughs> out we could look at them overnight and see about natural affinity and right and bundling and then we could report in tomorrow with some ideas would that work we have a debriefing tomorrow it's at 9 is that correct? 9.30? Yeah. 9.30, just across. 9 or 9.30? 9 o'clock in the morning. It's in the room just here. That's room 11. Tomorrow at 9.30. 9 o'clock, please. I beg your pardon. 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. So you get out of your bus and you come straight to room 11. And we plan a way forward with all the lists we've made. But for the benefit of those who are coming in later, what we did was to remind ourselves of all the emerging issues. And the question is, it was, is there any emerging issues that, were, that was missing on the list? Did you think one was missing? Sorry, I don't know whether I missed it, but is there something about mobile challenges? I mean, like, you know, using it mobile internet and, and specific challenges attached to the fact that, you know, and... I didn't hear mobile because nobody mentioned it, but, it but you want us to add use of internet on the mobile? Yeah. Okay. The con mobile content? access content there are i think that there are specific challenges linked to the fact that the internet is going mobile more and more and, and uh, okay so the the, 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 the the theme the, the, the theme will be mobility of the internet yeah like is an umbrella an umbrella topic issue yeah i don't know what you're doing. what, what um, internet mobility or mobile internet so we get it correct. What, which one captures your idea better? Uh, we mentioned that the Arab IGF that it was a point that was, uh, maybe it, has, it, 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 it dropped from the rapporteur. A mobile access, uh, extending access to the internet via mobile devices and mobile internet. But if I could ask our colleague, it seems to me that the idea that the internet is going mobile brings with it a whole lot of uh, yet un, uh, like today, um, you worry about viruses on your laptop. Uh, you are only now beginning to worry about viruses on your mobile device, but soon it's going to be a huge problem, right? Botnets and other things. So if we, if we use an umbrella that is m mobile internet or mobile something like that, we can put other issues under, underneath that? It could be extending access to mobile and addressing the challenges that come along. 
could you please write mobile internet access <laughs> as imagine issue so we get everyone on the same page okay any other issue that has not emerged yes Ponslet, gambia I, I just wanted to say I think um, within the emerging issues oh, when, when they gave this um, <coughs> the, um, Yulia gave this pitch on um, the youth IGF I didn't see it being captured in, in, in the rapporteur's report about because it's an ima it, I, I felt it was an emerging issue I don't know if I'm wrong I just need clarity on, on that yeah thank you youth and I, I think we said a lot of youth 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 yeah, please verify that it's in your report, but it should be there, please. Nigeria, are you requesting to speak? I, I came in late, so it must have been, I, I don't know whether something was said on child online protection. Anyone wants a mic to add to the emerging issues, please? Any other issues that did emerge that are not on the list, please? Cool. So, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay. Right. Could we go into a discussion about the the framework, the administration, the management of our different um, forums? Um, I do recall that Eurodig is having a dialogue. Canada is having a forum and not an internet governance forum. I think those are the things that came out originally. So some people are having internet meetings, some are having regional meetings, some are moving from one city to another, like Italy told us, and uh, some other people are not having it as internet governance, but as internet forum. And some, I think Bene and one other country spoke about internet days. So th these have been the different framework we've seen so the question now is, do we want to share more? Because we said, okay, we are going to come to it, and now we've come to it. What is the format of your internet governance? Who manages it? What is the management metrics? Who administers what? That will advise all of us, and that's what we're doing now. There is no particular order and so if you would like to share something, please raise your hand. Okay. I'm going to begin from myself. Yes, you volunteered me. So, hey. It, the Côte d'Ivoire Internet Governance has a secretariat with a project manager that is paid resident within the regulatory agency. And we have a website, and this person is the official face of the IGF in Cote d'Ivoire. So that is about the framework that we have now. During our first IGF, we did elect an IGF president in Cote d'Ivoire, who is also part of the regulatory agency. So we have two people that are the face of Cote d'Ivoire internet governance, the president and the project manager. The project manager's job includes going around the country to do education, to engage with different stakeholders, um, to, do, uh, to sensitize, to take questions, to consult, and to report to the community. And if you go to our national portal, which is igici.ci, igici.ci, 
you will find out that we are even bringing up news. So part of the work of the project manager is to share what is happening in other internet governance areas. So the website has become a kind of a knowledge clearing house on IGF issues, on events, on news, on who is doing what. So it's become a landing page for us in Cote d'Ivoire. That's what I can share from Cote d'Ivoire. And then we come over there. The microphone is not far from you. Thank Sorry, you. Sorry, Chair, can I just ask you to add a topic before we go? That is, that we need to describe the multi-stakeholder, or do, or do you want to do that separately? Unle uh, unless you feel you have to. These are principles. What we are looking for is your unique experience in the administration of and management of your IGF. But in order to be uh, related to the IGF, it has to be multi-stakeholder on an equal footing. So do, do you want to maybe save that for a second round and talk about how we deliver that? I, I'm, I'm happy to do that. I just want to be sure we address that. I think it's a really important challenge. OK. Let's do something. When we come round, please give us all the principles you, th you feel should be in the administration and what you are leaving, what is happening with you. That helps advise all of us. Anders Johansson, Sweden. Concerning Eurodig and to promote dialogue, as, as uh, we are very keen in Eurodig that we, we promote dialogues. We have a format uh, saying that uh, we don't have speeches, not absolutely not more than 10 minutes, very often less. And to 90% last time, I think this uh, worked out. It happens that people, uh, uh, high decision makers, for instance, like presidents, although we don't have a president in our country, but we have other <coughs> um, Import considered important persons. We have to, um, and we we, uh, we try to be very strict and and uh, not give them very much time to promote dialogue. So we have special. We have uh, ten or twelve points to guide every every organizer of a session or a workshop how how it should be uh, managed concerning, for instance, time limits and reporting. Of course, we can do it better. We can improve it in Eurodig, but, uh, but we make a lot of effort in this to really promote the dialogue and not speeches. And Eurodig is, is a, um, a basket of European IGF countries, the, the IGF in different European countries. That, that is what makes up Eurodig, is a dialogue. Y yes, uh, yeah. all all European countries, all the 47 European countries are invited, uh, and um, uh, I think last year uh, maybe we had 35. I'm not quite sure. Uh, and of course, there are s some countries that are more active than others, but uh, but still, it's a wide range. Okay, great. I just want to add some points just to clarify this because uh, Eurodig actually, although not institutionalized, has its own secretariat, very small secretariat, a group of enthusiasts who administer all these logistics and collect all the input uh, over, I mean, during the year to sum up and to come up with the final agenda and uh, basically to implement the event as itself. So Eurodig runs more or less like the global IGF, but for Europe, sort of. Okay, and we know that the next Eurodig is going to happen in Lisbon, Portugal. But uh, I think it's fair to say, since I participated in some of the national IGFs, I see Portugal sitting here and others, the national European initiatives do not report to Eurodig. Eurodig doesn't charter them. They're independent and freestanding, but they may choose to participate with Eurodig. Is that, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. A 
the Arab IGF has tried actually to work on the on the four main um, uh, um, I don't want to say guidelines, but best practices of the global IGF, which is transparency, bottom up, multi stakeholderism, and inclusiveness and openness to all stakeholders. So, um, so it's a, it's a meeting. It's um, it's a yearly meeting that happens. The first one was, like I said, in Kuwait last month. Uh, but in order to maintain the bottom-up approach, it ha the, um, the call for establishing the Arab IGF was done in consultation with the broader community. So this was done in a big meeting where uh, invitation was extended across all stakeholders and where the basic guidelines for setting up the Arab IGF was w were done. Um, a secretariat is at the National Telecom Regulatory Authority of Egypt, and it was just a proposal made uh, by NTRA, which was accepted. Uh, we, ha we, we had to look for umbrella organizations because the involvement of, um, of government and the, 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 the process, uh, institutionalizing the process within the Arab region is very important. It's, uh, it you can't just have like, for example, in the Euridic, uh, um, uh, uh, dialogue, which is uh, done through maybe volunteer work, but you really have to have something institutional. So we're having two umbrella organizations, which is uh, the UN ESQUA, and uh, the League of Arab States, and thus actually more or less uh, spanning across uh, the whole Arab countries. And actually both umbrella organizations have passed through their normal process, resolutions through their ministers, to the Council of Ministers, to, um, let's say, endorse the Arab IGF. So they, they do not have any, I mean, the, the government does not have any control, governments do not have any control over the Arab IGF, but I actually endorse it, and they, um, uh, we share with them uh, our report via those umbrella organizations. So this is uh, how it is. We run the whole show, uh, preparing for it, intersessional through a, uh, a core group, which is very similar to the MAG of the global IGF. It's called the Arab uh, MAG and it con con consists, consists of all stakeholders. It was selected to have a balance between the different stakeholder groups and a gender balance, pretty much like what's being done within the global process. <coughs> and it has taken care of all the work, and it's going to take stock of the first meeting and prepare for the next meeting as, as we go. So that's from one side. Uh, we've had some challenges. If you want me also to get on, on that, we, we, we come on that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, response late again from Gambia IGF. Now, um, when our IGF follows um, the um, principles of the multi-stakeholder um, approach, because we, when the Gambia IGF started, it was initiated through the um, West African IGF um, consortium that was led by Foster, um, FOSFA, the Free and Open um, Source Society, which gave guidelines when they appointed um, national resource persons for each country on how they wanted it to work in the spirit of multi-stakeholderism. So we have a national resource person for IGF, which in the case of the Gambia is myself, that works um, directly with the Ministry of Information, Communication and Infrastructure, as they are the ministry responsible for all um, ICT matters. And me, myself, as national resource person, I do, I'm not a standalone. Um, we have, I fall under the umbrella of the IT Association, which works with um, the ministry because they have to give um, guidelines to what, within the national context of ICT, what should happen. Now the ministry, sort of um, working, um, working with um, myself, set up like a local MAG. And that local um, MAG constitutes of all key um, stakeholders that um, cover all areas within um, the, um, the multi-stakeholder approach. So we have the non-governmental um, um, association of NGOs, we have the University of the Gambia for academic, we have the regulatory authority, and um, we, we have um, also the chambers of commerce um, covering that and all the um, ISPs, of course. Within the ministry, we are not just working the, um, with the ministry um, without, they have a focal point person on IGF. And what happens is that within all these um, um, various lo um, local mag that we have, they all report to their constituencies through their various web platforms on what the national process is about 
and apart from so when we have any information to send about what happens locally we have we send it to the west african um internet governance forum websites yeah because we we felt it was not necessary to replicate a local igf website since all these various um, um, constituencies that are part of this multi-stakeholder approach, they all have means to disseminate information to their, um, 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 to their various constituencies that are key stakeholders within our forum. So that is um, the way we operate. The last thing I'd like to say, in, in our last IGF, what we discovered, taking a clue from how you have the UN um, IGF Secretariat, we all key stakeholders, we met with the local UNDP in the Gambia, and um, who also acts as the UN um, resident coordinator. And so they too now decided to be part of the whole process and um, to be involved as a local UN agency, you know, so um, which I think really um, helps us a lot. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, well, since 2005 that we have uh, a, a forum on information society, uh, it, uh, it, um, it was part of the, of the diploma that set up the Knowledge Society a agency that was merged this year with Foundation for Science and Technology. Um, and so uh, we lost that diploma. But ne nevertheless, since 2005 that we had this forum on information society that was boosted by the government, uh, but it was organized already with the other stakeholders. And we had, uh, as far as I remember, well, on accessibility, e-commerce, digital, e um, digital economy, and in 2010, we organized the first forum on information society on internet governance. It was the very first one. Um, what we do is that the ministry uh, starts a, a process and then invites stakeholders uh, from the academy, from the technical community, from the private sector, um, and uh, uh, from the civil society and uh, we all together, we organize. But one thing is to organize and to hear all these uh, stakeholders. The other thing is how these influence the decision. And uh, so uh, it influenced the decision, for instance, on a diploma on accessibility, for instance. Um, now in 2012, uh, we were merged with Foundation for Science and Technology and uh, all this agency is now in a department that is called Information Society Department. And uh, what we started to do was to organize together with ISOC Portugal that was set up last year, uh, this forum on internet governance. We continue, we did this forum on information so society on different themes, and one of them is each year on internet governance. So after this, uh, this forum, we launched the messages of Lisbon. They are no conclusions at all. They are the main message that were conveyed by the several speakers that were invited or that they wanted to be part of. It's not only of, 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 of the speakers, it's, it's of from the audience as well. Ah, time, okay. Uh, last, the last thing is that we publish, uh, we, we, we publish a booklet for, uh, from uh, every forum of on information society. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm from the uh, Finnish Foreign Ministry. Uh, in Finland, we have a so-called FIF, the Finnish Internet Forum, um, and it's organized by our uh, national multi-stakeholder WISIS Working Group. The group it's itself was established before the first uh, WISIS uh, summit in Geneva because we needed to coordinate our national positions, and therefore it's steered by uh, the Finnish Foreign Ministry. 
but it's a group which is composed of different uh, entities uh, across all stakeholder groups and it functions as a steering group for the Finnish Internet Forum. Uh, we have now had uh, three, uh, uh, three annual events, events of, of Finnish Internet Forum and, uh, and they have been held in different uh, premises. Um, we have a couple of principles which have been established and one is that it's open and inclusive, we don't charge anything for participation. Uh, part of it is always organized in English so that um, we have had some, uh, some foreign invitees and we have also cooperated among the Nordic countries. Um, we discuss uh, current topics of national interest but we also uh, discuss some issues that, that relate to international uh, internet governance. And uh, we have just uh, decided to change the timing of the event before we organized it uh, every um, autumn, but now we, we see it more fit to organize it in spring so that we can feed into the uh, regional Eurodic meeting as well as uh, to the global IGF. And uh, we are uh, trying to make it a process instead of just one annual meeting so that we organize smaller events uh, all throughout the year. Thank you. Chair, may I ask for a couple of minutes extra because I have uh, something to amuse ev everyone and uh, this is truly unique experience. Huh? Thank you. Well, first of all, uh, the Russian IGF uh, uh, operates in a very competitive environment. I deliberately left it for this session just to let you know that some countries have internet days. <coughs> Russia, as usual, is sort of special. So we have a Russian internet week. Uh, not we, but I mean the internet community. Last year, it, uh, usually it's, um, uh, it's uh, held outside Moscow. So last year, 16,000 applications were uh, submitted for that event. And 3,000 people were lucky to find accommodation. Uh, in that area to attend that Internet Week. Next, we have a Russian Internet Award, which is a Russian Oscar ceremony, and it's given prime time on the national TV. Uh, the awards are given in 15 categories, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so it's been held for the 10th consecutive year, if, again, if I'm not mistaken. Third, we have private initiatives, like uh, some of you may know the name of uh, Eugen Kaspersky. So Kaspersky uh, deployed uh, a train to the Russian regions, because uh, just to remind you, Russia is as big that, uh, you know, uh, to travel from one side of the country to another, from east to west, it takes 11 hours by plane. So uh, uh, this, this train is uh, sort of full of, uh, you know, technicians and engineers and, uh, you know, internet guys. So they go to certain regions, like, you know, paratroopers, they are there on the field uh, to uh, interact with locals and uh, to give them some basic understanding of what the internet is about. So in this competitive environment, we try to build our own identity, our own brand, if you will, and to sell it. Uh, this is uh, not easy, uh, but I must say that we launched, we were happy and lucky to launch the public-private, I would say private-public um, initiative, because we team up with the Ministry of Telecommunications. I mean, uh, regardless of what I said during that oppressive legislation and stuff like, like that, they are really supportive. And we have uh, a joint uh, organizing committee. And uh, with the ministry um, usually uh, uh, giving us uh, free facilities, and media coverage because that's the Ministry for Telecommunications and Mass Media and I would just love to see uh, whatever editor-in-chief who would turn down uh, the minister's invitation to cover that event. And uh, also visa support when, we, uh, when it comes to certain uh, people coming from overseas. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we and our sister company, uh, because we are a non-profit and the sister company is a kind of, uh, you know, regular business, so we provide funding uh, we provide um, uh, manpower, I mean la um, the workforce, uh, we provide website. Uh, we uh, launched that website three years ago. Uh, plus a couple of other, uh, other NGOs helping us with that. So sponsors, we have only um, information sponsors. Uh, not any other businesses are involved uh, that much because, you know, we don't want to sell our brand for some, you know, miserable, uh, I don't know, $5,000 um, uh, 
offered by some foreign company. You know, we're Russians, we have our own pride. Uh, any rate, I mean, this is pretty much bottom-up initiative. Uh, let me just uh, tell you that uh, the ministry does not dictate or impose whatever uh, rules or suggest any names. Uh, this is purely our, uh, by our initiative. And then uh, to um, sell our brand and sell our, our, our event, we need to be creative. And, uh, well, Marilyn saw that. We need to uh, concoct or come up with new formats. Uh, which would ignite a Russian audience, with, uh, which is sort of uh, a little bit, uh, you know, uh, resistant, I would say, in terms of absorbing new ideas. So you need to ignite them, you need to store their interest all the time. So that is why we try to combine, we see this event not as a dialogue per se, rather as an educational event, still, which is still needed for Russians to grasp the concept of uh, multi-stakeholderism and just to finish this, uh, we try to get big names, you know, to deliver certain presentations. We try to establish some dialogues like battles, you know, not like rap battles, but in a sense. And we try to get more people like, you know, prominent uh, uh, internet practitioners to lecture at local universities as side events, which is a great success. Thank you. Now, wasn't that a serious branding speech okay thank you russia you can now go and report that you made waves oh at yeah. baku igf and you got two times applauded Marilyn. so i'm going to speak about the igf usa oh, but i want to um, open my comment by um, commending you nina for um, your sort of summary here of the uh, different approaches or terminology that we use to describe these events and activities we're all using to advance the multi-stakeholder model and engagement in internet governance. I really like the diversity because I think it um, really shows that we are in fact being bottom-up and meeting the interest of the communities that we're trying to serve. The commonality, I think, um, that brings us all together is a commitment to multi-stakeholder, to transparency, to accountability to the community, and to um, advancing some kind of positive um, uh, activities and change as a result of, of organizing these events. IGF USA, as I said earlier, is probably going to sound really different to all of you because we do nothing that is about national level policy activity. And that is because we want IGF USA to survive. There are so many think tanks and lawyers engaged in policy work in Washington and companies that have so many resources focused on, you know, national cybersecurity and privacy, et cetera, that any new entrant <laughs> into that space would immediately find themselves head to head in competition and just squashed. People would not participate. It would be you know, the wrong thing to do. But what we're doing is to try to take the global need for understanding about internet governance and educate back into this rich tapestry of think tanks, academics, businesses, and make them understand that what they do at a national level has a global implication. So you probably are astounded to hear me say that we consider IGF USA's major responsibility raising awareness and understanding about what internet governance is and why it matters. And it's, so we're, 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 we're making very slow progress, but we are making progress. But um, that's a major thing that we do. We have a steering group of about 75 to 80 people it grows and changes every year. It's totally open. So literally anyone who asks to be a part of the steering group, as long as they commit to the principles and they commit to participate, they participate equally in the steering group. I act as the chief catalyst. And the work is, as usual, is done by about 20 to 25 very actively involved people. But every time I threaten to take somebody off the steering group list, because I haven't seen them or heard from them, they refuse to let me take them off the list. It's all we do is to plan. We, we 
we do something that may be useful for you to understand in that we brief and debrief around the public consultation in, uh, for the IGF. And we try to empower individuals to participate on their own, not on behalf of the IGF USA, in the public consultations, either remotely or in person, so that they go and they're informed. We also brief and debrief about the other key activities in the larger internet ecosystem. So I have a roadmap of meetings and events and we brief them on the WISIS plus 10 consultation and that they should file comments. So we use it as a kind of a, a briefing environment. We use a Ning site. We have very, very few resources. The only, um, I have a, uh, a two part-time interns for four weeks a year and a part-time assistant that works three hours a week um, except for the time that we are actually the six weeks right before the event and then she works um, uh, a little bit more. Um, all of the sponsorship is expended completely against the food, the printing, etc. And I think the total administrative costs for the past two years have been less than $5,000 in terms of the money that was spent on administrative costs. It's not going to last. It's that's a, that's a fragility that has got to be fixed. We need more resources, but it's, um, that's where it is now. That's a very important insight, which I think will kick us off on the road to challenges. And uh, you started off by saying w the, the IGF USA is outward looking so that it will survive. And then you ended up by saying it's fragile, it may not survive. Okay. That, that's a very good one. No, I said it was fragile, but I didn't say that didn't mean it wouldn't survive. I <laughs> hope it will. Su I think it will survive as long as you are there. Okay, so now we're taking challenges. Okay, I if you would want to add um, management, please just go on with challenges. Okay, do you understand what I mean? Yes. Yeah, because we have half an hour remaining. And please remember it's two 120 seconds that are given to each cause, actually. Okay, um, just a background information to start because I didn't have the chance to speak in the previous session, but uh, Lucky IGF has a particular format. It's very collaborative. Uh, there are uh, more than 32, can th 32 countries involved in uh, our policy development discussion and uh, it's a multi-stakeholder discussion. Uh, last, uh, w one of the main efforts is try trying to engage uh, all the stakeholders and also engage uh, all the, or try to engage all, all the countries. It's hard in the Caribbean but we provide uh, grants uh, to participate for people from all the countries in the region and we rot rotate the meetings. So uh, the last uh, meeting ha we had people from 22 countries in the region uh, and more than 150 participants. Uh, next year we will keep this uh, format of uh, making a, uh, an open call for participants for, try for entities that try to host the next meeting in the next year. We will keep the format of an open agenda determined by the community on a basis uh, of a survey and we, we will keep the, the format of uh, discussing an agenda similar with the main topics of the IGF, but with a fl regional flavor that uh, the survey could uh, provide. And we are increasing our budget. Um, the last, uh, last year we had a $100,000 uh, $100, uh, budget, and this, this year we are improving in a 30%. So we, we hope we can uh, continue improving this, uh, this participation. And this doesn't count the government's uh, funding because, for example, uh, the Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean has an, uh, a strategy, um, um, uh, um, information society strategy, and uh, the governments that are in, in those uh, steering committees are participating as members of the organization uh, group for first time this year. And all the governments that want to discuss uh, internet governance agenda in the region uh, are 
coming to this event. So for example, there Brazil provides uh, grants for other governmental officers to participate to, us, to this meeting. So we, w we went over 10 different gov governmental delegations in the regional IGF. This is much more than what we had, uh, our region had in this IGF. Um, so, uh, for example, last year the IPSA proposal, with the famous IPSA proposal at the main session of the in Critical Internet of Resources, what was discussed uh, previously in the regional uh, preparatory meeting, and uh, it, it's actually the place where the agenda is discussed in our region in, in the internal governance, and, and this is speaking about challenges, what is uh, becoming more and more uh, the place to discuss internal governance. Uh, we are also providing, um, the IGF is very far away from our region uh, year by year. Uh, apart from the Brazil uh, IGF uh, in, in Rio, uh, most of the times we had to travel uh, more than 24 hours to come and a lot of money spending in traveling. So uh, this time last year we provided uh, grants for three people, full uh, cover to come to the IGF in, in Nairobi. and. Uh, this was the first time and we tried to get people that came for the first time to the IGF and uh, on in 2012 we, we put six grants full cover to come to Azerbaijan and also people that are the, f the first time that uh, are participating so it's a success in that in that sense and we want to improve even more uh, many of the people three three of the people were speakers at the session of the ones that we were granted and came for the first time, one of them was was speaker at the main session, and one of the main session, the, the one that's currently uh, uh, now on, uh, and there are people that are relevant for the community, but they, they didn't have the funding to to come. So we want to improve that. That's part of uh, our challenge for for the future as well. And I, I think I covered uh, mostly our the, the, the format situation and the challenges for the future. We want to keep multi-stakeholder and, and one of the, the challenges is to formalize this uh, structure that we have and LACNIC is uh, also willing to rotate the secretariat role. Uh, maybe in the future we can do that. Uh, at the, the moment uh, we have been the only ones dealing with this, uh, this uh, activity. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Peza. I think that that experience explains a bit about what is happening in the West Africa IGF as well. We kicked off with an initial seed funding from a donor. Uh, we had a consortium of seven organizations, and after two years, it's going down, and we are not sure how this is going to play out. But I do see signs that maybe the regional organizations would want to buy into this to keep the sustainability. But I'm really very sorry, Laknik, because if we are going to Bali in Indonesia, <laughs> that is farther than anywhere but, else. But this is very nice place, so <laughs> I, I'm really, I, I, would, I wouldn't mind. I <laughs> Everybody wants to go to Bali, but that is a long, long journey. And I think the budget issue is going to come up with almost all of us unless you are from the Indonesian the internet governance. Otherwise, ev if in fact, Indonesians will have to travel as well. I everyone's traveling down to Bali. It, it, it's going to be, I think this is something we need to capture in this report because this will may be the farthest um, we have to go for an internet governance forum, okay? Anyone else? Wait, you have, good, you have the mic in front of you. And we'll come back to Finland. Um, yes, one of um, the, the the main challenge we have um, in the Gambia is um, local resource in some key areas of um, pertinent issues to internet governance, and I, I think that is one of um, the key things that this community here from the different regions um, can support. And um, I'll, I'll be very grateful, um, like the email um, Fandeza said, to know um, the, the, different, the different groups 
data here. So in case we, we are coming up, since I said earlier on, our first IGF is always our IGF is always in the first quarter of the year. If we need someone, an, an expert in cloud computing, if I have to contact the Russian IGF, they will recommend someone. And we will say what we can do. So that is a key area that really affects us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think our challenge uh, in organizing the Finnish Internet Forum uh, stems from the fact that Finland is a small country. Uh, we have a, a very small uh, multi-stakeholder working group uh, which functions as, as a steering group and, and uh, the organization is really based on, on the active uh, participation of few individuals. So I don't know what happens if those individuals move to other tasks or lose interest. Uh, we have to work on the stability all the time yes. and uh, in this context I would say that funding is not a problem for us, not because because we might have a little bit fun, let's, let's, let's but yeah. no, 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 uh, no, I, let me explain. Um, it's not a problem because we organize the Finnish Internet Forum also, uh, always in a public premise. It oh might right. be a university or, or uh, we had uh, premises provided by government entities, the parliament, we organized one session in, in the parliament of Finland. So uh, that's why, and we always found found a, a company or um, or even a government entity who was able to provide funding for uh, coffee and even for lunches, and that's all we actually needed. So so that's why we didn't have any problems with funding. But but the lack of resources and and lack of active people uh, is definitely a problem. Well, let me just uh, draw your attention to a very specific challenge we face, and that's uh, a, a huge region which to date has been forgotten, absolutely. And that's the former Soviet Union, including Russia, by the way, because the language barrier, no, I'm serious, the language barrier, it's that challenge we have to cope with, I mean, we as Russians, because we still feel responsible for our friends, and uh, former brothers or sister republics, whatever they are. Just imagine, in Russia alone, 86% of the population has no command of any foreign language. And the situation is uh, much worse in uh, those republics. We can see some Azeri guys who speak uh, English here, but uh, this is a very tiny fraction of the population. In other words, effectively, uh, uh, no matter how many hubs we would uh, install throughout the world. A huge territory is not covered simply because they are cut off, you know. So this is the problem I reiterate uh, at Eurodig and at some other forums, but I really don't know what to do with that because, you, well, this is, this is uh, very serious. So no, uh, no foreign language, English mostly. Uh, no communication, no awareness uh, raising uh, uh, as far as the internet and the internet governance are concerned. Thank you. That's a very valid point, uh, especially because I live in a French-speaking country, and I do recall that the program manager for my internet governance was asking me, do you think we can send our national IGF report in French? And I asked myself, why would she ask me that? If a national IGF is held in French, or in Azeri, it just follows that that is the language with which you will send a report to the IGF Secretariat. But it just struck me that someone in IGF Secretariat may not be able to read the language in which your national IGF was written. The report was written. And I think that is a key challenge here. But you missed the point. No internet governance forum, uh, forums throughout the former Soviet Union except for Russia and Ukraine. No. Oh, Lithuania. Well, uh, this, uh, that's uh, the, the Baltics. I'm sorry. The Baltic republics. That's a different story. So we're no IGFs at We're looking at, all. at beginning new phases. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Well, Smarin. Yeah. You know, when, when we first started, we were not uh, in any way um, uh, an IGF initiative. And, and I just want to reinforce again that we are initiatives. We're not IGFs. We're initiatives. 
uh, that's important to remember because of the flexibility it gives us and to remember that we don't have a formal relationship to the UN. We're adopting practices and principles that are consistent with the IGF. But we also have great flexibility. So when we first started, we held half-day uh, engagements where the government came and spoke with the stakeholders. And they were a half-day or so. And we had a lot of flexibility. We could um, hold them in different places. I could hold three or four a year around the United States based on you know, pulling in 40 to 60 people from just a, 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 an invitation. In formalizing the IGF USA, we're now back to the fact that we need to go back and add back on these half-day briefing events and activities to go to the next step to broaden awareness. Um, and I do think the other uh, thing that I'll be interested in seeing when we go through our mapping uh, exercise is what are the commonalities that we're identifying that where we can share information, uh, draw back. For instance, my first response to the comment about needing a cloud computer, computer speaker was to data mine the last few years list of, of um, panelists and speakers. Thank you. Um, in the case of Nigeria, um, we are just trying to revamp the Nigerian IGF. The first of it, of something that looked like an IGF was um, a national IGF was in 2008, and it was facilitated by the Ministry of Information and Communication then. And uh, agencies in the in Nigeria, in one way or the other they understand the, what IGF, they may even put budget down for the IGF, but there was nobody to drive. So, and uh, because I was in the, in the government and uh, I retired, I said, look, this is an opportunity for me to do something for the country. So I decided with the, my volunteer work to facilitate. Now, at the forum, there was the question of where would the secretariat be? Who would manage? What's the principle? What's the process? And um, even two agencies of government were struggling. They said it, it will be their call. The other one said it will be their call. But the, the agreement at the forum was that it should be a neutral uh, place. And um, I can hear now that uh, there are some that have neutral places and others uh, government, like the regulator is a government agency. Okay, so um, uh, we are trying to see by, by next year when we are going to do that program, we'll start on time, engage the industry, engage trade associations, engage no, non-governmental uh, organization, engage government as well, because it was largely funded by government, and we wouldn't want government, government to just uh, funded because it would also influence some of the things because the report, when we finished the report, we had to take it to the minister. Okay, and um, though she, uh, the minister had not done anything about the report, they accepted what we have prepared as the report and they communicate. But in order to push it further than this, um, we may need that to, to have a strong secretariat, even if it's going to be in the regulator's um, desk, it should be a very strong one that will continue to work on that. But the, 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 the communication at the forum was that it shouldn't be in a government establishment. It should be a neutral, a non-governmental, or a forum, or just an initiative, or an alliance. So um, having um, heard from all uh, others, I, I think our challenge now is what to do forward. And um, I, I like the idea of um, of fin finish not having problem with funding because you got other people engaged on time. I think that's what we should also be looking at. It's not just when it is time to hold an IGF in the region or in the in the country, then we'll start running around. We start engaging potential sponsors, sp potential resource person on time. Those are my contributions. Thank you.
Thank you. And you kicked it off with a round of recommendation, which means engage more stakeholders, keep them engaged, so that when the time rolls around for a face-to-face -face meeting, then it's, it wouldn't be the time for fundraising. We would have had commitment all year round. Arab IGF, you are going to continue on challenges and recommendations, and we are going to be ending in the next 11 minutes. Thank you, Nana. <coughs> well, of course, um, the Arab IGF um, has had similar uh, challenges like the one that were uh, listed on the table, and of course, funding is clearly one of them. But it's not about um, it's not about uh, the availability of funding. It's the about how you actually. Um, I mean, the funds are there. It's about <laughs> getting them and putting them in the right channels. So um, we've had little time actually to, to administer the process. Uh, the the, the AMAG had worked in, in under very uh, tight time schedule, but we figured out we have to put some processes in place in order to have sponsors really <coughs> um, um, come in and put the money. So, so, so what we did, we, we initiated a fellowship program and we initiated a sponsorship program and we've made them transparently available. It came in a bit late, but if they were made earlier, we would have had more of that. And But those have made so much difference to get people into the meeting. And so this is something that we want next year uh, to take good care very early on. Because if you really very early on put the fellowship programs and then you say here, if you come and, um, uh, and uh, put some money in that, then you can get your fellows and then they would maybe you create your own network. So this is uh, uh, one thing. Um, the other thing that I think is important is actually um, to reach out to communities that are different than, uh, uh, to, to key players that are different than the ones that usually come to the global IGF, usually go to all the different meetings. Because those organizations and those people have already invested some time of their voluntary work on one side, and the organizations have put work time from their employees. So for example, um, uh, at NTRA, we have the Secretariat, which is part of our employees' workload. So it's kind of an in-kind contribution from the different organizations. We have similar, in the region, even the AMAG members come in a similar situation. So their organization pays for their money, for their travel, and for the time they work for the Arab IGF. If you're gonna, if you want to sustain the process, then you have to really reach out to different organizations, so they have to see what's in it for me, and then you can actually connect the dots and have the, the topics that are being discussed actually address the different challenges, so you can actually expand your sponsor network and uh, and and so you go on. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just have two recommendations to make. Okay, it's either one one long one um if we could all share we could take the initiative out of the mailing list you know to share when are we having our national igf when are we having our regional igf so that every other person can know and so they can join in and if we could um, add remote participation as an as a need within the national igf and the regional igf that way even if it's someone who is national but they're not able to attend in person, they can still participate. Thank you. Uh, going on to that, I would like to add from my experience in the Cote d'Ivoire and West Africa IGF, um, that it's important that the secretariat be mutually agreed on. Um, every country had specific issues. And um, in some countries, the regulatory agency may be the best suited to, uh, uh, and what the, the 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 criteria will be: who has the greatest potential to hedge in other partners, to bring in other stakeholders, to make them comfortable enough to come to the table. Sometimes, in some countries, it might be a civil society organization that has this capacity to unite, to motivate, to invite, and to keep people engaged. And in some other countries, it may be a neutral organization, it may be the, an agency, it might be someone else, it might be a hired consultant that everyone agrees on. So my, my recommendation would be that for any IGF, we must find the best suitable entity 
to drive engagement, continued motivation, and sustainability. Did I see any hand? Why is it Russia and US all the time? Well, just because we have the best practices, probably. Um, so three, uh, three recommendations which I would put for anyone um, interested. Well, first of all, uh, well, uh, market and sell the event uh, uh, as much as you can. To do this, you can get some celebrities, not necessarily uh, Bill Clinton, but uh, for sure some, uh, let's say, why not Windsurf? And then sponsors will pop up, for sure. Uh, second, uh, uh, do care to uh, build, uh, to nurture and build a strong constituency. Uh, that would help, uh, would propel your uh, momentum because they will push you as well as government or some other stakeholders to do more IGFs in the future. I mean, they will just compel you uh, to go ahead with that. And third, uh, do not hesitate uh, to uh, put aside uh, what whatever critical they may seem issues uh, but to focus sometimes on certain issues which are pretty local, uh, which may stir the, uh, the genuine interest and ignite the audience and uh, make them uh, contribute to your discussion. Thank you. I, I have two recommendations, and one of them is that to the greatest extent possible, you invite Changatai Masanga, the Executive Secretariat, to be a part of your um, of your session. Buy him a business class ticket. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I was I was just going to say you do need to plan for um, um, supporting his travel. It's one of our major areas of expense, but a very important one. But the second thing that I want us to all think about very pragmatically uh, is um, I can't afford. I am not paid for any of the work I do on the IGF USA coordination. And um, I am very committed to interacting responsibly with all of you, but I want it to be very lightweight and very effective and focused for all of us. So between now and tomorrow, maybe, because uh, Farzana will be back tomorrow, maybe we should be thinking about what is the minimal but critical kind of interaction we want to have. The list serve we have right now, I'm not sure that's serving everybody. Um, so maybe one conversation we could have as a recommendation is what will work for us? And do we want to look ahead to make sure we plan um, time for a specific interaction in conjunction with the regular consultations? Not in competition, because many of you are MAG members, <laughs> but whether it's, you know, a sidebar hour or something to think about that between now and tomorrow? We have two, three minutes to take one or two moments. Okay. So, Marilyn, I think you're the star of the day. Any other issues floating that needs to come out any other issues that need to come out recommendations challenges best practices going going 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 and 0 Right, please do not forget that tomorrow you get out of your bus and 9 o'clock you come straight to this room for the debriefing. Thanks.